So let's say we're playing around with springs and we want to figure out something about the spring constant. And we take a spring and we hang it from the roof and then we put a mass, m, on the spring and we let it stretch out. And based on these measurements, can we now determine the spring constant? And let's give you some numbers to work with. Let's say that Li uh, is 8 centimeters and L stretch is 12 centimeters. And let's say that we are using a mass of two kilograms. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what the spring constant is K. All right, so this is a Hooke's Law problem, right? The Hooke's Law describes the force, the restoring force due to a spring. And if I think about this picture right here, I can draw a free body diagram for that, right? What does a free body diagram look like? Well, my mass becomes a dot. There is, of course, gravity acting down. And there is some restoring force from the spring acting up, okay? That has magnitude kx. Now, if this is in equilibrium, it's just hanging there, not bouncing up or down anymore then we know that the sum of the forces in the y direction has to be equal to zero. Kx is going up. Mg is going down. Those are the only two forces, so they have to add up to zero. And now look, we can solve this for x. Kx equals mg. x, uh, if I divide by x, If I divide by x, then I get k is equal to mg over x. All right, do we have all those numbers? Well, not quite, because x is really this distance right here. It's the difference between the stretched length and the rest length, li. And so we have to be careful here in x, we really have L stretch minus Li. And now it seems we have all those numbers. So we can plug them in and try it out. Okay, so K was mg over Ls minus Li. Let's plug in some numbers. In SI units, we have two kilograms for the mass. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. LS is 12 centimeters, but we have to put that in SI units, which is meters, and so that becomes 0.12. LI is eight centimeters, so that becomes 0.08. And now if you punch this into your calculator, what do you get? I get 490 for K, and what are the SI units of K? Well, let's look at this. Mg, that's a force, right? So that is Newtons. LS, that has length units, which is of course meters, and so K is in values, is in units of Newtons per meter. Let's ask a follow-up question. Let's say we double the mass that we're going to put on the spring, and let's see if we can calculate the new spring length. Well, let's go back to that last equation that we had, right? We had an equation that said k was equal to mg over ls minus li. We can use that equation again, but now we're going to change m to 2m, okay? This mg down becomes 2m. Now we want to solve this for ls. Okay, so we can do that. Let's multiply across by that quantity. We get kls minus li equals 2mg. 
we can divide by the K, so we get LS minus LI equals 2MG over K, and then we can add LI, so we get LS equals 2MG over K plus LI, and now we have all those numbers, we can plug it in and try it. Okay, so the numbers are the following. We've got a 2, we had our original mass, which was 2 kilograms. We've got a G, which is 9.8. We're going to divide all that by K. We just found out what K was, 490. That doesn't change, right? It's the same spring. And then we have to add Li, which we said was 8 centimeters, 0 0.08 in SI units. Let's see what we get. I got 0 0.16, and the units are, of course, meters. Now, you probably could have figured this out already because 8 stretched to 12 with one mass on it. That's a difference of 4 centimeters. How far is it going to stretch with two of those masses on it? Another 4 centimeters, which would be 16 centimeters or 0.16 meters. All right. Hopefully that's clear. Uh, cheers. <laughs>